Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to the bench. Today on the bench, I have the Field Tech. Oh, wait a minute. This is not the Field Tech. This is the Quant Asylum audio analyzer thing. And I have a cable connected from its output to its input. So I'm testing the frequency response. Well, I'm of the belief that audio interconnect cables really don't matter. You know, they're not really going to harm the signal. But look what's happening here. You know, I'm doing a frequency response test. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty flat. You see? You know, that's one kilohertz here. Let me back up a bit. And you can see it's starting to drop here at, uh, you know, two and a half kilohertz. And you can see at 10 kilohertz, we lost a little bit, about half a dB. At 20 kilohertz, we're what? One, two and a half dB down. Yeah. What is going on here? Well, as you can see, I'm coming out here. And I'm going through a resistor. That's a 100K resistor. So why is a 100K resistor causing us to roll off? Ah, good question. Well, as it turns out, it's the capacitance in the cable. You know, this cable's not very long. It's like two and a half or three feet. But there is enough capacitance in there to cause this to act as a low-pass filter and we're losing amplitude. Okay, let's measure the capacitance of this cable using the meter here. So the other end is open. So let's uh, try to get my fingers so it's not touching it. 97 pico, yeah, that's about 100 pico farads there. That's a lot more than I expected. Let's get a uh, second opinion from this chintzy little meter here. Let's see, I got gator clips on this one, so let's see what we get here. That's a little higher on this meter, but it's, yeah, it's in the ballpark. It's around... 118 pico, it looks like. So, yeah. Significant amount of capacitance in that cable. Okay, so if you do your capacitive reactance formula, you should find that it's 3 dB down at around 15K with a 100 pico farad and a 100K resistor. But... You know, with the cursor set up there, it's saying 3 dB down and around 22 kilohertz or so. Well, you have to take in consideration the input impedance of this thing as well. So it kind of loads it down. and In effect, it's kind of like putting the output and input impedance in parallel. You know, with the signal on the wire here, so you know, that's why it's rolling off at a higher level. But anyhow, yeah, it kind of shows you how cables can affect your signal. Now the good news is, in the majority of the cases, you don't have to worry about this because the output impedance of most devices are going to be very low. They're going to be like around 100 ohms, give or take. So, you know, you're way, way lower than 100 kilo ohms, and it's going to be able to drive the signal through that cable with its capacitance without any problem. So where can this be an issue? Well, with certain transducers, like, for example, guitars, you know, they have the pickup coils, and they go through potentiometers that could have a very high rating, then, though the uh, coil itself might have a DC resistance of a few kilo ohms, 
you know, the impedance of that signal, because, you know, that is an inductor, those coils, could be much higher. Plus, like I say, the signal's going through a bunch of potentiometers. You know, some of those potentiometers are pretty high in guitars. So if you run out and buy a big, long cable to plug your guitar into an amp, you might notice a loss of your higher end. Another thing is turntables. If your turntable is sit situated a good distance from your preamplifier for some reason, use a longer cable, it could be a problem. There, it's a little more complex in that case because some types of cartridges want a certain amount of capacitive loading, and there also could be the effect of the impedance of the signal coming off the cartridge that could be affected. And if you step back to the video where I built that Rod Elliott Phono preamp, I didn't add any loading capacitance on the input of that amp because it's pretty much already there in the cables. I really don't need to do anything with that. Okay, so now I plugged in the 6-foot cables, so it's a little shy of 2 meters. And, wow, this is very significant. You know, at 6K, we're 3 dB down, well within the audio band. This would be very audible, the loss with this cable. Again, with a 100K source impedance. To simulate a 12-foot cable, I just jumped the ends of the cable together. So it's going down one end and back up the other. And now it's getting pretty ridiculous. Uh, around 3 kilohertz. We're 3 dB down, 10 dB down at 10 kilohertz. So yeah, getting pretty ridiculous. But watch this. Okay, I removed that resistor. So now the output impedance is whatever this is. I think they said it's like 100 ohms. And yeah, it's flat. You know, that's 20 kilohertz right there. And, you know, it just goes on flat. Ignore that. That's uh, the way I have the thing set up. But the cable itself is flat. So it shows you how the output impedance of your device can be affected by the capacitance of the cable. The capacitance of this cable, both sides, because I have them connected together on one end, is... 1.1 nanofarads. So yeah, it's getting pretty significant. Well, that may not be an issue with uh, you know most audio equipment, unless your output impedance is fairly high. But one thing you might want to watch out for is video, because some people might want to digitize video with these cables by connecting an old camcorder to their computer, digitize the video, well, if you use one of those long cables, it might be an issue because video signals have a couple orders of magnitude more bandwidth requirement, and they go up into the megahertz range. And even with a fairly low output impedance, you could run into a problem where the video won't come out as sharp. In that case, I would use the shortest possible cable. One more test. What about the output impedance of 1 kilohertz, actually 1.1 kilohertz, considering uh, if that's 100 ohms. Well, still not an issue going through 12 foot of cable. Yeah, yeah, there is a slight drop off at 20 kilohertz, but for audio, that's just nothing to worry about. So what about inductance and transmission line effects? Well, it's not really an issue because the audio frequency is so low, it's almost like DC to the cable. And if there was any issue with inductance, it would show up just plugging the cable directly in. So capacitance is the dominant parameter with the cable. And as we see here with normal output impedances, it's just not an issue. And with that, I thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one be 3 dB down at 15K, so why is it 3 dB 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 dB?